Hello and welcome to Access Sports Net Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers. I'm Chris McGee. Big game, James Worthy. Big shot, Robert Ory. We've got Allie Clifton here. We've got Brez and Trudell working the post-game locker room. We'll be hearing from everyone shortly. Uh, guys, the Lakers kind of similar to game one against Memphis. Messed around a little bit. Uh, they only scored 94 points. By the way, that's the lowest they've scored this season. Uh, the low going coming into this game was the Portland loss at 107. <clears throat> but... Just like they have in the past, they found a way to get it done. When you have the two best players on the court, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, that's going to happen on most nights. Uh, they sweep the road trip. They go to 4-0 on the road and 6-2 and overall, James. Yeah, and, you know, throughout 72 games this year, you're, you're probably going to have a few games like that. You know, spend a little time in San Antonio. Then you go into Memphis where you got to stay, you know, longer than you've ever stayed. Back-to-back -back games. I know they got some good barbecue in Memphis, too. I probably would have had me a couple slabs of ribs kind of slow me down. But How much yeah, for just one rib? You, you, you're going to have those type of games. I mean, Memphis is a, is a team without their star player. That automatically makes everybody else energy, you know, play better, and they're up. Uh, and, you know, uh, it was a sloppy, you know, sloppy first half. Lakers turned the ball over too much. Didn't get to the free throw line like they usually do. Only 11 attempts at the free throw line. The bench production has been lacking a little bit because of players, you know, not being available. Uh, so it's just one of those games, but it just goes to show you, like you said, the superiority that they have, that they can put their two big guns and, and, and close the game out. Rob, I know I've had you talk about this before. Fish talked about it the other night as well. You guys have been on great teams, teams that have repeated and won championships. Sometimes there are nights where you got to admit it, it's hard to motivate, but you just know you're better than that team. And sometimes you flip that switch at the end. We kind of saw that tonight. It's dangerous. I know the fans don't love it, but tonight we saw it. It's very dangerous because you, a turnover, as you see at the end of the game, two Q, uh, Q, uh, crucial turnovers right there, a uh, uh, three-point there. And you don't want to play with teams like this because anytime you get a team like this, it gives them so much confidence that first quarter, second quarter, next thing you know, you're in your fourth quarter, and you're in a position that you don't want to be in. But the Lakers was grinding it out. They did what they needed to do, and they locked guys down down the stretch. And that's the true sign of a championship team to be able to lock in when need be. Took the words out of my mouth. Sunday, they held Memphis to just 40 points in the second half. Tonight, 43 points, so they did it with defense and then turned it on at the end. Another big night from AD, 26 and 10, par for the course. He's with Mike Trudell. All right, Anthony Davis, things got a little interesting. Uh, in the final seconds there, what were you guys seeing as you held on to get this win? Um, we had to get back and play some defense. You know, they're a team who's looking for their first home victory. Um, you know, we're a team who's, who like to win on the road and establish a, a road winning culture. Um, the team is young, and even though they're missing, you know, their two best players, and Ja and uh, JJ, they're going to continue to fight. And that's what they did all the way to the buzzer sound. Uh, me and Brian had two turnovers where they, you know, got fouled in uh, on both plays. So, and then we had a mis miscommunication call on the three with uh, Dylan Brooks. Um, so we got to get better late game, but. You know, this team is scrappy. They're a young team who's, who's hungry. Like I said, looking for their first home victory, and uh, we was able to pull it off. You know, one thing that you guys seem to take pride in, you and LeBron, is making plays on both ends in crunch time, which uh, separates you perhaps even from several other stars. We saw that again in the fourth tonight. Uh, AD, what is that mindset like where you both have to make sure you're getting the buckets on offense, but then be the guys that can make the plays on the other end? Yeah, uh, that's what your stars have to do on your team. Buckle down both ends of the floor. Um, you know, Ron with that big time block. Um, you know, I had a I had a block as well. Um, you know, going to the line, making free throws on the other end, making plays for ourselves or others. Like, that's what it's about. You know, we want to be a good team. Obviously, the team is going to lean on both of us. Um, on both, excuse me, on both ends of the floor, and we're able to we're able to do it uh, both ends, um, especially late game. AD, last thing for you. Now, I'm sure you're not familiar with this stat, but you rank ninth all-time in games with at least three blocks and three steals. It's a pretty good company. Guys like Akeem and Robinson uh, up there on that list. Uh, what what do you see there in tonight? Again, you're able to get so many deflections and be able to protect the rim like that. <clears throat> it's activity. Um, getting my activity back high. You know, our team leads um, and goes defensively as far as, far as I go. And um, I got to be the one to bring that activity each and every night. And and um, was able to do that tonight. <sighs> Ooh. Able to do that tonight with uh, my activity, um, getting deflections, and, and protecting the rim. Um, 
and you know it, it, car it, it carries that it carries on and trickles down to our to our other guys. You know, Brian doing it, Trez doing it, Mark. You know, Dennis is getting steals and and, and Kuz and West. So you know, all our guys, Markeith, you know, protecting the rim. So we all you know playing our part. But um, I take pride in, in making sure that from the opening tip, I try to make sure that I go out there and bring that energy on the defensive end with deflections and blocks. All right, Anthony, 4 0 road trip. Uh, time to get on that plane back to LA, man. Oh, man, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I think they were trying to go at halftime, but they had to kind of finish this game. <laughs> Most games with three blocks and three steals. Rob, we wanted to show you this because your former teammate, one of your favorite guys in the world, Akeem Olajuwon, the dream, he's done this 204 times. Wow. Put that into perspective. Anthony Davis is ninth on the all time list. He's done it three steals. Rob, we wanted to show you this because your former teammate, one of your favorite guys in the world, Hakeem Olajuwon, the dream, he's done this 204 times. Wow. Put that into perspective. Anthony Davis is ninth on the all-time list. He's done it 43 times. So AD came to play. He was big in crunch time. Ten three-point attempts, by the way, for AD. That's a career high. He hit 40% of them. He's four for 10. He hit 26-10, four assists as well. So AD doing it all tonight, Rob. Yeah, he had a plus 12, and, and that's what you want to see out of your guy. You know, even though if you really think about this, like he had no offense rebounds. That's the only thing you can really say bad about his game. Shout out. And he and he does possess a lot of talent throughout the game, but to get to where LeBron is, night in and night out. I mean. I mean, there's been nights where AD was not there, and LeBron just said, okay, it's my job. It's what I do. LeBron, in terms of experience, too, to that point, he's got nine years on Anthony Davis. Through that. You just think of the ceiling. We often talk about it. What is the ceiling for players? And for what we're watching right now, mm. that's where the biggest wonder is. Mm-hmm. How good is he? How great is he going to be? we don't talk about also, think about this. He probably has more playoff games than AD got. Regular season <laughs> games. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing people don't understand yeah. also about LeBron because he's gone to the finals with 9 out of 10 years or 10 out of 11 years, whatever nine it is. 9 out of 10, yeah. 10 out of 11. And, and I don't think the fans or the people at home understand the pounding your body takes during the playoffs because it's a it's a harder grind in the playoffs because it's back. You play, then you're off, and you play, and you're off. And then you got these teams that are beating down on you because they know what you're doing. And for him to still be competing at a high level and doing this and have with a smile on his face. I think that's the most fun part. Yeah. The joy that they're playing with, the smiles that, yeah. that you're seeing night in and night out. Loves that's, his job. He well, loves that's his why, job. And, and I remember talking to you a lot during that off season and, and of course last year in the preseason, like what would AD do for LeBron? You know, LeBron has always had to carry the torch. Now he gets a younger guy, a guy that's uh, unselfish, they're Extends. friends. Like, will it give him a little rebirth? And it has. And extends his career. Yeah. No question. Uh, I mean, he's had some other players, obviously. Of course. Uh, Miami, uh, I mean, Cleveland. But I don't think he's had what he has right now. A young player who possesses this type of talent, who can dominate, and they have a good relationship. There's no, there's, there's no static there. They like playing with each other. Uh, AD's willing to learn from LeBron. They don't mind monitoring each other constructively, criticizing each other for the better of the team. So uh, I think it's just a, a, it's just a great relationship that they have. I, I also think there's, you know, LeBron is the type of guy who can learn from maybe the one or two mistakes he's made in his career. And I think it boils down to communication. I think he's opened up the line of communication. I know Ali can attest to this better than I can, but you can just see it on the court, how he's talking to guys. And because, mm -hmm. and there's certain ways you can talk to guys on the court. And he talks to them like, you know, man to man, not anything where he's berating anybody or talking down. He's just talking man to man. I think guys are more accepted of that and they take it and they, they put it in and say, hey, this guy's all right. That, that is a good point because on our road trip and episode, he said, Guess what? He's ready. <laughs> he's ready. He's ready. All right, fine. You Whenever guys did a phenomenal ready, job, though, of vamping. Uh, back to Memphis. LeBron is speaking with Mike and me. E.F. Hutton. <laughs> hey, LeBron. Just, just wondered what you've noticed in the difference on a four-game trip like this uh, from previous years. And I hate to keep coming back to comparing. I know it's unique in the pandemic. But how you get a team to four straight wins, staying in the hotel, you know, thinking about other things. How, how have you guys kept the main thing, the main thing in, in your words? Uh, that's what it is. I mean, um, you know, uh, we're here to work, to get better, uh, and to win. Uh, we're in the winning business, and uh, and that's what we want to do. We
going to continue to build great habits. Um, and we're going to have um, we're going to have times where we don't play to our capabilities, but we still want to be able to create uh, great habits going forward. And I think we did that on this road trip. Even with the new players, are there times like in the closing lineup where you and AD already sort of know exactly what to do to close out a game? Uh, how how much of that is is conscious, and how much of it is just the way that you guys impact the game? Um, well, I mean, who's ever out on the floor late in the game um, is a reason. It's a reason why they're out there, and we trust everyone that's out there, all five guys. So, um, you know, I think tonight's closing lineup was myself, uh, AD, uh, uh, Dennis Menace, uh, Wes, and uh, Kuz. And we was able to, uh, you know, close the game out in fashion and, and uh, get some stops, uh, timely stops, and get some timely buckets. Dan Wargy. Hey, LeBron. I'm going to take you away from the court for a little bit. Um, Obviously, uh, you guys played a game night, but there's so much going on in the world. Um, in the morning, you guys find out that the officers and then Jacob Blake shooting won't be charged. As the day goes on, I'm sure you've gotten news about what's happened in Georgia and the turnout there and stuff like that. Um, on nights like this, how are you able to focus on basketball? And I guess sort of your reaction to the, what else is happening? I mean, um, and, and all these other orbits that you have uh, your fingers on. Well, I'm smart enough to know that even though we're playing a game of basketball, that there's so much more that's going on in the world. So, so much more that's even more important than us playing a game. Um, and uh, to hear what happened in Kenosha today was a, um, was a blow to the heart and to the gut, um, you know, not only to that community, um, you know, but to us and, and to every, um, you know, I guess, you know, black person that, that, that just has uh, been a part of this process and seeing these outcomes for so long. And not only just in the black community, but also in the white community as well, who, who, who see, uh, you know, moments like this happen to us um, and to happen to his family and to happen to, to the kid himself. Um, to see that verdict, it was just um, it was a blow to the gut, like I said, and a blow to the heart. Uh, and, um, but we got to continue to we got to continue to stay strong, um, continue to, to, to believe in each other and continue to push for the, for the, for the greater of change and for the greater of good. And uh, to hear. Uh, you know, my people turn out in Georgia um, in the fashion that they did. Um, I'm definitely going to get some more information on it, but I heard they, they turned out in Georgia, and, and that's uh, commendable. Um, it's something that we started with more than a vote, and we want to continue to do that and continue to support, you know, actions like this and causes that went on today um, and has been going on, obviously. So I'm uh, proud, um, you know, proud of my people um, for getting out there um, and doing what they do best. So, and that's being heard and being seen um, and being powerful and being engaged. And, um, you know, that's... Uh, that's how it is. Dave? LeBron, what does the next stage of More Than a Vote look like? You started in the in the summer. There was the big election in November, the runoff today. Uh, can you take us forward as to what the next steps will be? Uh, one, I can tell you, Dave, is that uh, you know, we're not going to stop. Um, and we're, we're always looking for opportunities to continue to grow not only in my community, but all over all over the world and, and all over America. As you've seen, we've been able to do since the summertime um, all the way up into today. Um, so we're going to continue to keep our foot on the gas, continue to keep our foot on, uh, keep the pressure on going on how we continue to create change. And like I said, it create change for, you know, the black community, but also just create change for the greater good. And um, uh, we're looking forward to um, and seeing what uh, ways we can do and what we can do going forward. Uh, a few more. Uh, Bill Orm. Hey, LeBron, um, this is the first time we've talked to you about um, Jacob Blake since since the bubble. And I'm wondering how this result, in, in if at all, um, cha not changes is the wrong word, and I hate that I'm using it, but how that makes you look at what you guys did in the bubble you, when you, you, you know what you guys were kind of standing for together as a league. Um, does this result at all um, how does how does that color when you look back at what you guys did uh, as a league in the bubble? Um, well, the best thing uh, we were able to do in the bubble is that we were able to stand together and uh, and the strength in numbers, and we was able to showcase that throughout everything that was going on in America uh, and everything that was going wrong in America, and we was able to voice those opinions and to voice those facts every single day. And I hope we can continue that now, even being outside the bubble as I'm sitting here talking to you about, you know, the verdict that happened in Kenosha um, and what's going on in Georgia. Um, and, and there's going to be other <clears throat> excuse me, instances that's going to happen throughout, you know, the course of this season. And, and I hope that we all can continue to shed light uh, on, on situations that one, that we believe in. Two, um, if it hits in our home or hits in our heart, that we can talk about it and discuss it 
and also just be um, <clears throat> knowledgeable about any situation that comes out. So, um, you know, like I said, it's a blow to our community once again. Um, and we've been here, we've been here before. It sucks. Um, you know, we feel um, sorry for his family and, and for that community itself. And we just want, we want better. We want better. And, um, and hopefully we can get that. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Last question, Kyle Goon. Um, you know, LeBron, obviously we ask you these questions because you're an influential person in sport and culture. Um, but, you know, after these things happen, you say things, you know, there are people who are going to criticize what you say, who are going to criticize NBA players for sitting out, criticize Colin Kaepernick. That dynamic kind of continues to exist. Do you feel frustration about the people who kind of focus on the words you say or the means by which people protest rather than sort of the substance of what is actually being protested and, and what issues you guys are trying to draw attention to? Yeah, I mean, people are going to always um, di um, direct or, or deflect or, or just, uh, you know, pull you know, bits and pieces of your, or your dialogue and try to make it for the, the, the better of what they want to hear or what they, um, you know, believe that you should be doing. And, uh, you know, I'm past that in my life. I don't I don't really care what people think, uh, especially when it's if it's negative. Um, when I'm speaking from the heart and I'm speaking from a very knowledgeable point of view, um, I know what I'm saying is right. Um, and, and I can care less what, what other comments or what people say, because um, at the end of the day, no matter what, we are all human, um, no matter the color of your skin. Um, we all have emotions. We all have we, we all have the same color blood when it comes out. Um, you know, we all you know, pull our pants up and, 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 and you know, and tie our shoes the same exact way. So. You know, and, and um, you know, so, you know, when it comes down to that um, and I understand that, I know that that me speaking about uh, issues that's going on and not only in my community, but all over the world or, you know, and or, you know, especially in America that I live in. And this is, you know, our home base. Um, who, there's not one person that doesn't want to see uh, the greater of good for all of us, um, you know, and it's unfortunate that we have some people out there that would rather see hate than love. And, um, and it's something we won't ever be able to change that's that's just the way how life is built unfortunately but you know if we can get the majority on one side uh, on the side of love then hate then uh, we can do some special things so um you know i will continue to uh you know, use my platform uh, use my um you know my influence and to continue to empower people to continue to enlighten people on things that's going on that i feel that's just wrong um and uh today is one of those instances where we we as a community feel like um, you know, the verdict on, you know, that particular officer um, was just uh, was wrong. And uh, there's nothing else to say more about it. Appreciate it, guys. Big game, I'll let you take the floor first. Well, I mean, you know, it's just a continuation of, uh, you know, of, of, of what's been going on in this country. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, when things happen, you know, our community, we, we already know what the results are going to be. Yeah. Unfortunately, we, and, that, and that's not good. But it, we're never going to give up. Uh, it's going to take a lot of recognition in this country. And people are going to have to be honest with themselves about the history of this country. And we're going to have to re-educate ourselves until we get some peace. Because right now, there's still a lot of friction and a lot of hate. And, uh, but I like what the NBA is doing and the WNBA. Um, so we got to keep on fighting, man. Never give up. Never. You know, it, it, you know, I hate to say did on him, but as you know, ditto. he said it so beautifully. <laughs> yep. So it's not much to say, but ditto. Well said. Allie Clifton, big game James Worthy, Robert Ory, Mike President.